This is Megan Friedel from the Wisconsin Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and I am so excited to share our mini-series on community safety. Community safety is so important to me. As a certified orientation and mobility specialist, I think when students have a strong understanding of the many aspects of community safety, they are more confident and more independent travelers. This mini-series is derived from the newly released teacher guidebook from the American Printing House for the Blind, titled Health Education for Students with Visual Impairments, a Guidebook for Teachers. This series has three main objectives that will be discussed over the course of three videos. One, students will be able to identify appropriate clothing choices for the following situations winter conditions, such as a snowstorm, rain, nighttime and dark conditions, and the three W's. Objective number two, students will be able to explain the following laws, the Pedestrian Safety Act of 2010, and the White Cane Law specifically for Wisconsin. And then finally, number three, students will be able to share a minimum of three strategies for safely traveling alone. So first up, we will cover clothing management in various seasons. First, we are going to hear from Ms. Kay Rohde from the WCBVI Outreach Team about the three W's. Everyone, Kay Rohde here from Hayward, Wisconsin. Some of you know this area because you were at Forest Lodge in Cable, which is just 30 miles away. You might have been there because an Apostle Islands trip couldn't get out to the islands due to ice one year, or you went winter camping with us at Forest Lodge. So I'm up north, and today it's 58 degrees, and I want to just talk to you about what I'm wearing on a day like this. There's a system called the three W's, wicking, warming, and weather. Today, I am wearing a wicking layer, just a light t-shirt against my skin that can wick the moisture away as I move about or sweat. Um, the second layer is a warming layer and I do have a half wool, half cotton light sweater on. I didn't think I'd need it, but the wind is making me chilled. And my third layer is the weather layer. For me today, that's helping with the wind and the rain. So if you go out in a day like this, around 58 degrees, you might dress like this. I, I don't have um, rain pants on because I can get into the cabin and don't have to worry like I would if I was camping about staying completely dry. I do have some hiking boots on that uh, will help me when I'm walking through the wet grass and gravel. I guess that's all I've got except I just want to show you a view of a lake. Maybe you can hear the waves and the wind. Have a good day. Great! Now that we've learned a little bit about the three W's, be sure to keep those in the back of your mind as you learn about different dressing tips for various weather conditions, whether they be warm, cold, or even rain. Let's talk about some ways that you can stay cool. First and foremost, it's important to drink water and keep a water bottle on you at all times so you make sure that you can stay hydrated. A hat is a great way to keep the sun out of your face and also keep your head cool. Sunglasses can also help you stay cool. Not only can they reduce glare, but you, it, the sunglasses can also keep your eyes and your face cool from the sun. Another reminder, this doesn't have anything to do with keeping your body temperature cool, but we always want to wear sunscreen when we're traveling outdoors, no matter what the season. It's so important to protect your skin. And then finally, the last three points, we want to think about wearing lightweight clothing, and like colored clothing. And then also, you may even want to keep a change of clothes on you if you are somewhere where it's really hot or you get really sweaty and your clothes become damp, then you're able to change. 
Next up, we are going to talk about staying warm. But first, we are going to hear from Mr. Paul Olson, Superintendent of North Dakota Vision Services, from his short YouTube video about staying and dressing appropriately for the winter. Orientation and mobility in the winter. A Golden Guide presented by Paul Olson. Paul from North Dakota Vision Services School for the Blind. I'm going to give you a few winter mobility tips. Uh, first of all, we'll start off with clothing. Wear good clothing. If you're in a climate where you have anywhere near zero um, or sub-zero temperatures, um, you really need multiple layers. I'm not going to lecture you on that. Everyone knows you need good clothing. Starts off with good footwear. Um, wearing boots when you have snowy conditions is important. Something with a good tread. You can buy ice cleats. There's a variety of those that if you live in a climate where it's icy. Uh, but the main thing is good uh, footwear that, uh, that has perhaps some coverage around the ankle. Um, also, obviously, you need a hat and gloves. Uh, depending upon how cold it is, you might need a very good uh, thermal cap, something to cover your ears if you're out walking um, because your ears are very easily frostbit. Um, but again, if you're going to go out and cross the street or something of that nature, you need to be able to uncover the ears so you don't have your hearing obstructed. So I'll place my hat on and um, get zippered up. And the last thing, obviously, before we go out is good gloves or mittens. Um, most of the time, gloves are going to work pretty well. You can use a regular um, grip position and use two-point touch cane technique. However, I will say if you're in a particularly cold climate, mittens will work better for protection. That makes it challenging to hold the cane in the traditional fashion with the index finger extended along the grip. But uh, if you're in a really uh, snowy condition, you're going to probably need to have mittens because uh, it's just going to be a little bit more protection for you. Okay, I just want to explain a little bit more about the mitten and glove combination. Uh, you can get them in wool. This one happens to have a nylon exterior and I like it because again I can take my index finger, I can place it along the grip of the cane, and I can use the cane in a very traditional two-point method and I get good control of the cane shaft. Um, if, however, it's very cold out, um, I can use the mitten. The grip is going to be different, and um, that, you might not like that if you like extending the finger along the grip, but when you're in snowy conditions, you have to first and foremost be safe. All right, let's go. Wow, those are some great tips for O&M in the winter and staying warm. I think that North Dakota can get even colder than Wisconsin sometimes. And then finally, when it comes to staying warm in the winter, don't forget about those three W's. You may also want to consider wearing a ski mask. Those are going to cover uh, a lot of your face and will give you some extra protection, especially with your cheeks and your nose and your forehead. Thermal socks will keep your feet warm. Long underwear, you can wear um, them as pants and a top and you wear those underneath your garments as just an extra layer of warmth. As Mr. Olson just said, mittens can keep your hands a little warmer than gloves, but you can also wear gloves. Yak tracks will not keep you warm, but they will give you good traction when you're walking in the snow or a potentially icy surface. And yak tracks actually go, actually go over your boots and your shoes, and then you just go on and head out to wherever you're going. And then finally, I want to touch on, uh, you may have heard people say to you before, it's important to wear good boots in the winter. Well, what does that mean when they say to wear good boots? When you're thinking about wearing good winter boots, you want to consider a few things. One, you want to make sure that you're, they are going to keep your feet not only warm, but dry. Two, you want to think about how they're going to fit you. You want to have a boot that you're able to walk carefully and confidently in and that don't feel too bulky and make it more difficult for you to walk in the snow. All right, now that we've talked about staying warm in the winter and cool in the summer, let's start talking about staying dry in the rain, which we know can happen. It can rain all year long. 
Someone once said a really cool quote to me that I think is just a great tip. You want to keep the water in you, not on you. So if you want to stay dry in the rain, here are some things that you can keep with you or wear when you suspect it might rain. Some of these items you can keep on hand with you at all times. First off, a raincoat. You can wear that over your clothes and it will not let the rain um, soak through onto your clothes. It'll keep you nice and dry. Rubber boots will keep your feet dry. And if you have to walk through a puddle or anything, your feet and shoes will not get dirty or wet. An umbrella is something that you will open up and you carry it over your head and it will keep some of the rain off of you. Not all of it if it's windy, but it definitely is a good thing to have on you to protect you from the wet weather. Wet weather. Again, you're going to probably hear me say have an extra set of clothes a lot. Um, it's important because there is always a chance that if it's raining out and if you have to walk, walk a long way, uh, your clothes may get wet. And so it may just be best to plan to get wet and then have that extra clothes that you can change into so you can stay dry for the rest of your day. I really like ponchos. Um, ponchos, you can throw over whatever you have on. They're sort of these big, bulky, um, almost like a plastic sheet. And your arms go through. There's two holes for your arms. Your head can go through. And then there's usually a hood on them. And they just basically cover you up and keep you pretty dry. What I really like about a poncho is, one, they're really easy to put on, but two, you can they're really inexpensive. You can get them sometimes at the dollar store for a dollar, or they're fairly cheap, so if you lose it, it's not a huge deal. And they're also really small, so they can easily fit in your pocket or your purse or your backpack. So I recommend always keep one on, on hand just in case. Finally, if you're watching these videos with anyone, this might be a good time to take a break and share a funny story or a memory about getting really wet in the rain. The second thing I want to address about the rain, so we just talked about staying dry, but it's also really important to stay visible. Rain impacts the ability of um, people's ability to see. And so it's really important to stay visible in the rain. So one, you want to wear reflective materials and bright colors to increase your visibility. This is a list of clothing items that can either come in a bright color or have reflective materials on them or even both. You could wear a vest. Uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, but your cane has reflective tape. You could have a hat a coat, a t-shirt, a backpack, or you could even wear um, a light, like you could have a headlamp, a, you could carry a small flashlight, or you can also purchase small LED lights that you can attach to your clothing, like maybe one of the zippers on your coat or on your shoes, and that will light up and make you more visible to drivers. I want you to take another pause and think about do you have any clothes with reflective properties? And then finally, we've talked about all of these different types of clothing and even a little bit about gear. And so now you might be thinking about your closet and what you have at home. And maybe you're thinking, geez, I need to go shopping so I can be better prepared for outdoor travel. Well, here are some suggestions of places where you can purchase clothing for outdoor travel. Please note, these are not the only places that you can purchase clothes for outdoor travel. Just a few ideas that are pretty common. You could go to Walmart, order from Amazon. You can shop from Target. You could purchase a lot of these items from Dick's Sporting Goods. Land's End. The Dollar Store may even have many of these items. Farm and Fleet is another good one. And a really great low-cost option that I have found is Goodwill or Salvation Army. You never know what you're going to find there as far as outdoor gear. And sometimes you can find the nicest stuff for only a few dollars at secondhand stores. So be sure to check those out as well. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.